Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the multi-sphere trace by channel node? Let's go ahead and run our quick little example. To the left of me, we can see our multi-sphere trace by channel node itself, which is originating from the sphere and firing forward. If I was to walk in front of it, nothing's happening, but you'll notice it's actually hitting this cube that I have in front of me. It doesn't look like anything different than a normal line trace, but we'll cover what happens in the node itself. So let's go ahead and open it up. And what we have here is our multi-sphere trace by channel node. Now, if we compare the multi-sphere trace to our normal sphere trace, you're not really gonna see any difference on the inputs. The only difference will be the outputs. We're gonna output an array of hits rather than a single hit. And there's a couple things to keep in mind here. Even though the multi-trace says it's going to return all hits encountered and include the first blocking hit. The first part that says all hits encountered only really refers to overlap hit events and not a blocking hit. And that's important. By default, I've got this set up. So it's going to fire forward like we saw and it's going to fire on the trace visibility channel. Let me increase this up to, I want to say 60 and hit play. And now you'll notice we have a sphere at the start. It fires forward and we have a sphere that's choosing where we impact on. And the reason this happens is my little nose here is impacting and it's always fun to check out. But you'll notice it's impacting visibility wise, the edge of the sphere with the edge of this little sphere I have here on my blueprint. That's fine and dandy. But the problem I want to know is, well, let's pull out the length and let's actually Oh, I don't need that. Plug this back into here. Let's pull up the length. Seriously? Third time's a charm. There we go. Pull out the length of the array. And let's go ahead and print out what we're hitting. And we'll see we're hitting one. We walk in front of it, we're still hitting one. And no matter what, we're always hitting one thing. Well, like I said earlier, the overlap events are what get added to the array in addition to the final hit. Because nothing we're looking at is overlapping, it's just hitting, we're only gonna get our final result. So if we take our trace channel and change this to custom channel, if I go into my properties and I go to my collision and go to custom channel, you'll see it's set to overlap. And if we pull up any of our defaults, like let's say our pawn, and we look, you'll see the custom channel has been added and it's set to overlap. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to not block, but it's going to continue on till it gets to our endpoint, and it's going to return back anything that it hits with the overlap. So if we walk in front of this, we now see eight results, and if we move away, we see five. Each of the spheres, the cube, the blocking wall behind the cube, and then the blocking wall behind the blocking wall as you can see here. And we walk in front of it, we get the three overlap volumes that I have, the overlap channels that I have set up on my character. So that is one thing to keep in mind. It's useful for determining, by using a custom channel normally, or using something that's set to overlap, because if by default these trace channels are gonna have block for the visibility and camera, so you're probably gonna wanna use a custom channel. For an example, we throw a grenade into a room, that grenade explodes, we fire off a multi-sphere trace around ourselves. we determine what we've hit by using an overlap for the player channel, for example, and then we apply damage or do something like that to whatever we've overlapped. One issue you're gonna run into, if I change this to 100 and hit play, you'll notice it fires forward from our start to end point. Well, we want a simulator grenade, so let's set our start and end point to be the same and hit play. And we have our nice radius. If I walk into it, nothing triggers, however. The starting and the ending cannot be the same. The starting 
and the ending must be slightly different, if at all. So in this case, I take my starting value from my world location, add 0.1, and put that into my end. Now, even though it doesn't look any different, if I walk into it, assuming I set up my channel properly, oh, who knows if I did, trace channel, custom channel, yeah, everything should be fine. I'll make it a little bigger. Let's see what happens if we do 120. Oh, that's right. It's not set. It's not set to go green. It's set to give me the number difference. That's right. Okay, so zero and then three, zero, three. Or if I back out enough, I could probably get one maybe. No, oh, there's two. I'll get one if I do my butt. There we go. So depending on the items with the right channel colliding, I'm getting back the appropriate value on my left, which is how many things I'm hitting that have the custom trace channel. And that's because I have a slight difference between my start and the end with my radius of 100. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want to have a sphere trace go out, make sure you have a slightly different start and end. So to wrap it up, the only difference between the regular sphere trace and the multi sphere trace is you're going to go ahead and get back a result of your hits. It is not your blocking hits. It's going to be all your hits, including your overlaps. And you want to make sure if you want multiple values, make sure you're checking against overlaps and not blocks. That is going to wrap up our multi-sphere trace by channel node.